Well, thank you, uh, President McConnell, and council members, Mr. Mayor, everyone, uh, for the opportunity to be here tonight. I also want to thank you before I get started because it was about a year ago tonight that the RFP, the redevelopment of this site, the rise <coughs> building and such, was awarded to Keystone Property Group. And it was probably about 500 degrees warmer in the room that night. So thank you for getting the air conditioning going. We really appreciate that. It's nice for you to be lively enough for that the extra heat. Uh, we're extremely excited to be here tonight for the council and the public to formally unveil the master plan of redevelopment at Elm and Bad Streets. This is an exciting night for us uh, because of all the hard work that's gone into this process. Now, I know many people in the room and, and all folks on council certainly have lived through the last 18 months during this process, but I think it's important to note that this is a much older concept, much older idea uh, than the last 18 months. Uh, dating back to the late 1960s, your predecessors on council, as well as the Montgomery County Redevelopment Authority. You guys are right? Yeah, I'm Sure. As well as the Montgomery County Redevelopment Authority, worked together to put a vision of the future of Conchahawken. It was a time when the economic downturn was occurring in the late 60s and the mills were closing, and Conchahawken and the, the predecessors of this council had the vision to try and reinvent Conchahawken. And what I think is really telling about that is part of that reinvention process, part of the plans that are put together, focused upon the need to create certain areas and certain functions within the borough. From that was born the special planning districts, number one, two, and three, which created the opportunity for development to occur at different ports, uh, portions of the borough. And frankly, whenever those ideas came to the forefront, this council and its predecessors took control of that, worked with the developer, and developer to create those districts and allow that redevelopment. And I appreciate the fact that tonight as we talk about this next effort, council is considering the possibility of doing the same thing for us. And we feel it's both a partnership and, and are excited for this opportunity. One of the really interesting things they back in 1968 when this redevelopment was first looked at was the concept of a town center. A town center. Just like we had proposed in the RP that we were awarded last year. And fascinatingly enough, the site where we are proposing for the town center is essentially where it was originally going, was proposed to originally go in the redevelopment uh, plans. Obviously, it could have been the point that there was 20 some years or decades of litigation regarding that site, which resulted in delay for the redevelopment. But we are now back full circle because the litigation ended, and obviously the RFP was issued, which we responded to in ultimately one last year, to finally, as I see it, re. Uh, recommence or recomplete, if you will, the initial goal of creating a town center in the borough. In many ways, the borough's outgrown that concept, but in many ways, it, it's, it's perfect because it's not even a town center anymore so much as a gateway to all of this kind of job. We're excited because it's we're on the cusp of creating that town center, that gateway to the business communities that connects the more mature developed business district with the riverfront communities that have been created in special planning districts during this re uh, revitalization of the borough. But we're also on the, the cusp of and are excited because this reinvention, this redevelopment site, is something that will create a thousand jobs, permanent good jobs. It will create hundreds of construction jobs. It will put property on the tax on the tax rolls again, create more taxable rentals. It will create hundreds of parking spaces free public parking spaces to be used as part of the business community, the business area in the borough. It will take the historic, now mothballed firehouse and reconvert that into a pub, a brewery, <coughs> a restaurant for common use. And even more importantly, or even most exciting about that, is because of the fact that Keystone Property Group owns the property surrounding the site on Fayette Mountain to be developed, we are able to create a larger project which includes a public plaza, a public square, right in the middle of the redevelopment site. A public plaza that can be used for special events for the borough or for no reason at all. People just want to come together and congregate. It is a public <coughs> square community event. I'm not sure why that's happening. But it's generally it's someone's cell phone uh, is ringing silently. I don't want to say that bump, I'll go ahead. Um, I do, but it's not ringing. <laughs> Interesting. All right. I'll take that off. I appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, pleasure. Make sure you get that done. I will. Good evening. 
I'm Bill Blazer, uh, President of Keystone Property Group, and I want to thank all of you uh, for showing up uh, to speak about this because for me that is most important the participation of the community, the council, and the people of Conshohocken. Because what we set out to do a year, a year, a year and a half ago is to create a public-private partnership, and I, I want to stand on this point, it is the most important to me. I have a lot of great partners in a lot of projects around the country. Conshohocken is a great partner. When we set out with the RFP, and we said that we would undertake this process, it was really as a partnership. The partnership was set out to accomplish three things primarily. First, we wanted to further the long-term vision of Conshohocken. And as Mr. Nassner just said, this is over 50 years in the making of a vision which we are a piece of, we're part of the past, we're part of the future. The second thing is to help solve some of the parking congestion down along Lower Fayette. So we've set out to do that. The third thing was to solve the problem which was Verizon. The Verizon building was a major problem. And not only to set out to solve that by redeveloping it, but also to create revenue to offset costs. And I think you've just heard tonight which is really big news. Uh, not only have we delivered on the first part of the redevelopment, but we've brought to Conshohocken really a spectacular tenant uh, who fits right into the fabric of the community, the Philadelphia Water. It is our corporate offices. It is an amazing neighbor for the borough and an amazing new tenant and new occupant of the building. So the big success there, the booming waterfront which is growing some really exciting things happening down there, and a walkable downtown that's been around forever. It's really a wonderful place to be. It is how we all experience Conshohocken. But there's a void in between the two. And that void can be filled by this link. And it needs to be done with just the right artful connection of the brand new waterfront and the historic downtown. And that's what we're looking to accomplish. And the centerpiece of that is this plaza that David talked about. It's a meeting point that Conshohocken does not have. It's really, it could be the heart and soul of our borough. And the gem of the centerpiece is a 136 year old firehouse. Nobody else has that. But that really should be the gem that we can create into a place where all people are just gonna to wanna to be. You can hang out, spend time for public events, public plazas, or public uh, shows, etc. What sets off this centerpiece is a hotel on the corner and two office buildings, which frame our centerpiece, which is that public plaza, which is such an important feature of this entire development. So I want to talk about the features and the benefits and have our architect, Gensler, show you how this comes to life. The number one feature, the number one benefit is jobs. We want to bring hundreds and hundreds of jobs to Conshohocken. First, construction jobs. We're, back, we're building Conshohocken, and we need the people around us to have plenty of work for years to come. Construction jobs are key. And after construction jobs, we get permanent jobs. I'm not talking about jobs relocated from out of the market here. I'm talking about new permanent jobs, new positions in the hotel, new positions in the retail, new positions with growing corporate enterprises. Job, there's a lot of jobs come to Conshohocken, to the center of Conshohocken, as a result of this. And that spawns business all up and down Fayette Street, all throughout the borough. That spawns a lot of business. The next main feature that David talked about is parking. There's a real pressing need for parking in Lower Fayette. We're bringing 300 free spaces to our market. That's expensive. It just is hard to do. And we have a unique opportunity to do that. And by the way, we're leveraging all of this off a little strip of ground that is the corner 
which is where we're going to put the hotel. And the third feature is this plaza that will be ringed with shops and cafes and make an inviting place to extend what is a walkable contrahawken, what is a pedestrian experience, into an ideal transit-oriented development. Now I want to hit one thing head on, and that is when you bring hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of new jobs, and when you bring tons of new business, there is one thing that must follow, and that's traffic. And I want to talk about traffic. Because there is an old model about suburban development and a new model where we're going. I'm going to describe to you where real estate development is going into the 21st century. And this is very important as it relates to traffic. In the old model of suburban development, it was the drive, park, work, leave. That's what you did. There were boxes that are office buildings placed on sites. People drive, park, work, leave. And that creates what we experience at 8 a.m., a long line up the street. Okay? That is last century's model of development. What we're doing and where we're taking Conchahokan is to a transit-oriented development, or TOD for short. And this model does three main things that change the traffic patterns entirely. First, it creates mixed uses, right? Hotel, retail, restaurant, shops, and office. And those mixed uses have very different traffic patterns than the old model, drive, bar, work, leave, okay? Hotel will spread traffic all throughout the day and night. Same thing with retail. So that's first is you get diffuse patterns. Second is that the project sits right on the transit line. It's right at the train station, right at the bus stops. This project should drive and inspire workers to use public transportation, okay, which takes a tremendous burden off the highway systems. That's what has to happen in suburban developments. That's where the 21st century is going. That's where Conchahokan is going to be the leader by starting with this project. And the third thing, and probably equally as important, is that a project of this magnitude with all the retail benefits and all of the other things to do right in the middle of Conchahokan will encourage people to stay after work, to spend money here in Conchahokan. So it drives more revenue, <coughs> eases more traffic off the roads. That is the objective for transit-oriented development. 